This is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're here at the Source Capital Group 2016 Disruptive Growth and Healthcare Conference in New York City. With me right now is Richard Slansky from Oncosec Medical. The symbol is O-N-C-S. Richard, welcome to SNN Live. Thank you, Robert. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. So for our audience, let's get an overview of the company. Okay, well, uh, Oncosec is an immunotherapy company. It's focused on cancer, and we're taking the fight directly to the tumor, so we're an intratumoral company. Okay, now let's unwrap this. All right, so tell me a little bit more about the science, or actually, firstly, tell me where it comes from and, and a little bit of the history of the company. Well, some of the core technology came out of uh, Inovio, and our, our founder and CEO is Puneet Dillon, and he used to be with Inovio. He took that technology, licensed it out, and we've developed it since then. So it's, it's developing into more of a proprietary technology for, uh, for us, but that's where it started. And effectively what it is, is we're taking the, a proprietary molecule and we're injecting it directly into a tumor cell. Now, as you probably know, most tumor cells and most cancers are somewhat cloaking themselves from the immune system. In other words, the immune system would normally fight off the cancer if it was a healthy immune system. But since it's not, uh, it doesn't have that ability. What we're doing is we're taking a molecule, rather than injecting that molecule uh, into a, uh, a patient or using it systemically, we're injecting it directly into the tumor. That molecule is then... Uh, secreting a substance that helps to start to kill the tumor from inside but it also awakens the immune system. And then part, part of what we're doing is in order to actually inject that molecule into the cancer cell, we're what's called electroporating it. So electroporation is just a fancy way of, of saying that we're delivering the molecule into the cell by creating a little electric field around the cell and then that allows the, the molecule to enter into the cell we stop the electric field, it sort of traps that molecule inside the cell, and then it starts to secrete its substance. What I want to know is at what point do people use this treatment? When does the injection happen? Okay. Well, most of the preliminary data that we've got has come from melanoma. So we're treating cutaneous lesions. These are lesions that are on the skin. And so our treatment is basically a three-time treatment. We'll tra treat that patient three times within a period, say a week, and then the patient will go away and then come back again possibly for another treatment. So when, when we're talking about when do we actually electroporate, uh, it's during the procedure. It's a very simple procedure, five or ten minutes. Uh, we, the device that we use is called a generator and the generator has an applicator. The applicator has needles on it. The needles go directly into the tumor. The electroporation occurs. The molecule is then injected directly into the tumor and the electroporation stops. So we trap the tumor, we trap the cell inside the tumor right there. Okay, so you hit on one of your target indications, I'm guessing, is melanoma. So what, what are all the target indications for the company right now? Well, the company, even though it's a relatively early stage company, has three phase two clinical trials going on. One is in melanoma, uh, which we are far along with and we are expecting uh, data later this year. Uh, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a second. There's also a head and neck study, and then there's a triple negative breast study where we're going to be moving into a more broad-based uh, opportunity within breast cancer in the future. And how big are these markets? Well, the, the markets are very big. Uh, the anticipation is that immunotherapies will cover 60% of all therapies, all cancer therapies, within the next 10 years. Uh, that represents about a $24 billion market, and so each individual indication has a different size, but it's a very big market. And what I also want to know is what differentiates what you're doing currently than not just from what else is going on at large, but also then from what Inovio is doing where you guys started out at? Well, I mean, Anovio really uh, focuses on a different area and they use viruses. They do use electroporation, uh, but, they, but they don't directly uh, inject into the tumor. And the big differentiator for us is the fact that we can put more than one molecule into the tumor. So we can actually stack our genes and we can deliver multiple molecules or multiple genes into that tumor at one time where other mechanisms would not, it would not be possible. So it's going to, we're, one of the things I mentioned is we're going to be moving into a, an extended study in breast cancer. And when we do that, we'll be introducing a new molecule, which this year we'll be announcing what that molecule is. And then we'll be coming up, we're actually in a pre-pre-IND situation right now with the FDA, 
where we're going to be seeking advice on how to do that and getting that advice and incorporating it into our plans for the future. But that's going to be a very, very interesting study where we can do, then inject uh, multiple genes into a cell. And why, why these markets right now? It could have gone after any other, any other ones, but why these specifically? Well, I think melanoma, because historically we've been in melanoma, our device could only go to cutaneous lesions initially. We're developing new technology and new devices to be able to go subcutaneous, so we'll be able to address other tumors in other areas of the body. But initially that was it. So where's the company at in, the cl in, in your clinical development? Well, we've had some very good preclinical and clinical results. Uh, in our metastatic melanoma uh, results have been very positive. And in Merkel cell, which we published recently, we saw 14% of the patients with full uh, remission, in other words, uh, completely clear to the cancer. Uh, in addition to that, we've had uh, partial results in a number of patients. And then 50% of the patients had what's called an abscopal effect. And the abscopal effect means that we've treated a lesion but lesions in other parts of the body have been reduced or, or eliminated completely as a result of us stimulating the immune system, the immune system recognizing that cancer as a cancer, fighting it off, lesions in other parts of the body have gone down. So we're very excited about that. In addition, we're working on some therapies in combination with Merck's anti-PD-1 drug, Keytruda. And, and most of the patients that are not responding to Keytruda, which is, uh, which is a very uh, important drug these days, uh, we believe it might be because they, it's in a low, the patients have a low-till environment, meaning, meaning a tumor infiltrating lymphocyte environment. And one of the things that our therapy does is it increases the number of tills. So we have a high or rich till environment. And in that type of environment, we believe that maybe uh, PD-1, the anti-PD-1, would be more effective. And so we're doing a combo study uh, now to try and determine if that's going to be more effective and increase the number of patients that respond to Merck's uh, drug from maybe the 20 to 30 percent range to hopefully 50 percent or more. Uh, we don't know yet, uh, but we do have a, a high suspicion and a high likelihood that by increasing those tills and creating that environment, that a combination therapy could be very effective. And what's your background? How did you get into Oncosec? Well, I've been working with the smaller life science companies for the last 25 plus years. Uh, I've worked with a number of different entities and my, my basic background and focus, I went to the Wharton School, uh, I, I have a strong financial background, uh, I'm able to work with either early stage companies or early stage founders, putting business models together, strong financial controls, and then really developing the fu funding required in order to bring these companies forward. So I've been involved in initial public offerings, secondary offerings, debt funds financing, things like that, but then really developing a strategic approach to be able to enhance value for shareholders. And I've had a couple of very uh, lucrative exits, so it's been a good thing. Uh, one of my companies, uh, which was CalBioChem, uh, grew from not, very, not a very big company, was brought public uh, through Alex Brown and Warburg Pincus, and eventually we sold it to Merck. So it, it was a good process, and we're in San Diego, so we tend to incubate companies in San Diego, and we do a pretty good job of it. Uh, so ultimately, we think that this is a potential acquisition target, but in the short term, we're just focused on generating good data and growing the company and putting in the, the types of procedures and controls that will really make a difference. All right, so Oncosec is an immunotherapy company, and that's a hot buzzword we hear. There's a lot of different immunotherapy companies. What I want to understand is, firstly, it, for, for Oncosec, where does the treatment happen? Is it right after diagnosis and then in between that and standard of care or after? How does that work? Well, in, in the case of our three clinical trials that we have going on now, uh, the physician ultimately determines when that care is going to be. Uh, in many cases, uh, our patients have gone through various types of, of uh, procedures already. It might be surgery. Uh, it might be, uh, you know, uh, some other type of, uh, of treatment that's gone on, and then they might inject our uh, therapy in the middle. So for example, a, a patient that's undergoing uh, cancer treatment, 
might have gone through a surgical treatment. They might be under radiology right now. Uh, they might be under some other type of treatment. The doctor may be letting them off of that treatment for a while, letting the, them recover, and then utilize our treatment in between and then go back onto their original treatment. So initially, we're, we're being slotted wherever the physician determines it's best. Ultimately, we believe this technology is going to be the primary treatment, but it's not, uh, it's not at that point today. Okay, so we're in 2016. From what you can tell me, what are some of your goals and milestones for the company? Okay. Well, as I mentioned, we are going to be coming out with a uh, new molecule, which will, will be a, a, a multi-layered molecule uh, to address uh, some of the immune issues that we've talked about and really bolster the, uh, the suppressed immune system. So that's number one. Uh, we are going to finish uh, the enrollment of some of our phase two clinical trials, so the melanoma trial. We hope to uh, have that fully enrolled and data uh, readout, at least preliminary data readout this year. The triple negative breast cancer study, we hope to have, again, uh, full enrollment and uh, initial readout uh, of, the, uh, of the data. And we're, we're actually looking at different types of partnershiping arrangements, uh, both academic and industry. So there'll be a number of different milestones that we're really focused on for 2016. And then going into 2017, hopefully this new molecule will turn into an IND and we'll, we'll be able to be in the clinic with it uh, along uh, in breast cancer in 2017. And where can our audience go and find more information about Oncosec? Well, uh, at our website is the best place, which is oncosec.com, so O-N-C-O-S-E-C.com. My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're here at the Source Capital Group 2016 Disruptive Growth and Healthcare Conference in New York City. With me again has been Richard Slansky from Oncosec Medical. The symbol is O-N-C-S. Richard, thank you so much for coming on. Thank to you, SNN. Robert. Appreciate it very much.